Hi everyone, uh, Mikey Mai back with Clam Man 2 Open Mic today and so far we have been quite unsuccessful in some of our endeavours and overly successful in other ones. Overly successful in cute daughter and daddy bonding um, <laughs> mission, uh, less successful in getting poor aggravated truck driver the ability to actually move his delivery truck. But you know, you win some, you lose some. That's just life in general, you know? That's the way the dice roll, especially in this game where dice roll is very important. Anyway, today we are in my apartment building and we're going to talk to Linda, who looks very interesting. Hmm. Linda is bouncing with joy in such short intervals, she might as well be vibrating. Close to her chest, she clutches a notepad tight enough to crease the cardboard cover. It's a notepad. For some reason, I thought she was drawing. Well, I guess she might be. Over here! Hey! Hey, hey, hey! Oh gosh, she is excitable, definitely. She calls you over with palpable excitement and glee. Realizing how loud she's being, she lowers her voice and leans in. Does she lean in? Conspiratorially, or does she just lean in? Listen, I've got it. What have you got? I've got the single greatest realist theory ever. Oh, she's doing theories. Okay, then let's let's hear it then. It's safe to say you've never seen her this excited for anything ever before. Start vibrating. Sh should I be seated for this? I'm glad you're not overselling it. Could have ruined the wow factor. Let's hear it. Can we do this later? No, do you know what? I'm gonna I'm all about I'm all about reflecting people's energy. She ponders your question very seriously, her eyes darting around the room to find a chair capable of receiving a blow of infinite realness. It might be a good idea. No, no, we can't wait. Put on seat or not. You need to hear this straight away. Uh, Alright, let's hear it. An elated screech barely makes its way through her clenched teeth. She tried to keep her cool, but the vibrations have now reached a frequency where her hair is starting to curl. If she could actually physically explode, this would be the moment. What if her theory is about spontaneous combustion? This is not the right time to be vibrating. Okay, okay. So... In between attempts to control her breathing, she starts explaining. She closes her eyes, retaining composure, opens them up, and looks at you with the conviction of a globally renowned scientist who is evidently completely, totally convinced about something. I, this is honestly, the build up for this is blowing my mind. If this ends up being co completely crazy about big beans or something equally random, I'll, I'll be actually pretty happy about that. You know how everyone is really awkward. Oh, yes. Story of my life. Definitely, I, I know that, yes, carry on, totally aware of that. It's, 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 it's not just me, it's mostly you. You're the most awkward, oh thank you, I, that, that makes me feel good, at least I'm good at something. I'm the most at something. <laughs> Her eyes widen, it's everyone, it, it's a global epidemic, or pandemic, I'm not sure which. All I know is that the symptoms are the same no matter where you go. Everyone is awkward. The only reason some people pretend not to not be is because they're extra awkward. Uh, that or they're a one on the scale. <gasps> you have created a scale of awkwardness? Oh my god, how do I take the test for this? I want to know. Scale? No one has ever quantified awkwardness. No one has ever created a scale for being socially inept. Until now, I present to you. <gasps> She just preparing herself to deliver the coup de gras. Patiently you at the realistic of all time. Smile, sometimes that's all the crazies need. Fuck do you mean you've actually Be mistaken, Metro Exit Scale? <laughs> <laughs> She's hearing applause and elation, a deafening symphony of cheer and rejoice. This is her peaking. She Probably like it if you sounded as excited as her. Come up with a more clever name than that. No. T take a step away, tilt your head back, and scream as loud as you can. Let Linda know you're as excited as her. No, I think that might be overkill. I'm so tempted just because I like doing the rolls. 
Let's do it. <gasps> hey, we did it! We did it! We actually improved! Why not the subway slip system? Get some alliteration in there. Slightly surprised, Linda considers your suggestion. That, that's not bad, actually. Let's put a pin in that. As in, you're not taking any of the credit for anything I have just done. <laughs> All right, anyway, let me give you the details. Basically, there are five levels on the scale. One to five. Zero doesn't count because no one is zero or awkward. That would be a super strange person if there was someone who had like zero awkwardness in their body. That would be super weird. Uh, yes, the fabled zero awkward person. Yeah, okay then. These five levels are determined by how any subject will act in a certain situation, which I'll get to in a second. First, I'm gonna give you some parameters. I like parameters, lay them on me. A metro station has two exits, exit A and exit B. In this evaluation, the subject's preferred exit is exit A, since it's closer to where they're going. Exit A and B are on opposite ends of the platform. Do you, you follow so far? I'm not the best at picturing stuff, but I think I can just about visualize it, yes. I think so, all the station has two exits, you want to get to exit A, exit B is on the other end of the platform. Great! She adjusts her stance, as if to seem more scientific and knowledgeable. Now, to place someone on the scale, we have to imagine a situation. Picture this, you get off at the station, you manage to cover a little bit of distance in one direction, believing you're heading for exit A, when you suddenly realise you're going the wrong way. What do you do? Oh, oh! Oh no, it's the worst thing ever and I've done it so many bloody times. The first time I'm walking around like a new area and stuff, I was like, yeah, I take any time I visit a new place and I realize I've missed a turning or I've gone too, like gone a street too far or something. And it's like, how, how do I turn around without making it look like I didn't miss my turn? And the trick, the usual trick that I pull, and I know it's not just me, is you walk a few more steps because you don't want people to know that you've done something stupid. You, and you walk a few steps, then you stop, maybe give it a good old head scratch. Then you take out your phone and you look at it as if you've got a message from somebody. And then you turn around with your, look at your phone and you walk as if someone's contacted you to say, no, you need to come back for whatever, you left something or something like that, just to pretend that someone's made you turn around. It's not your own stupidity that's forced it. Just turn around, no biggie. Yeah, who does that? What kind of weird humans do that? Oh man, that's embarrassing. I, I guess I'll just turn around. Maybe make some kind of gesture or face to acknowledge it in case someone's watching. Break into a cold sweat. Oh crap, J just keep going. It's too late to turn around now. I've committed, someone might notice. Um, my high self-awareness says, say nothing would explode with anxiety on the inside. This is too awful to imagine. I don't... Maybe I made a mistake in putting self-awareness as high because I'm not that neurotic. That's good. Maybe this is going to be a good self-help game for me because I think that I've got super high self-awareness and I'm super paranoid about things and anxious, but maybe I'm not as bad as I thought I was. It's this one. Some kind of gesture or face or take your phone out your pocket. Yeah. Right, that makes you a two on the MMES, which is pretty awkward, but not as awkward as could be. Don't worry, there are plenty of people more awkward than you, and uh, it depends on the situation. That's just one example, to be honest. And there you go. We've successfully quantified awkwardness in a way that everyone can understand. But wait a second, you said there was five on the scale, and I only had four options to choose from. Right? Uh, got some questions about skill. That's it. Great. Now about the name. <laughs> okay, I've got some questions. Because of course I do. I've got nothing else to do with my day at the moment except try and advertise a comedy club that I'm meant to be performing at tonight. So what's a level one on the MMES? Uh, a level one just turns around and heads for exit A. She points a finger at you, emphasizing her following point. However, that doesn't mean they're not embarrassed. The MMES takes physical action into account, but just because someone's a level one doesn't mean they won't think about their mistake for the rest of the day, or the rest of the week. And not every single time you walk down that street again, if it is the street example that I used. The level one will try to get out the station as fast as possible, but won't do anything out of the ordinary to acknowledge them messing up. Cool, level two, that's me. Well, the focal difference between level one and level two is that the, the latter responds by signaling their self-awareness. They'll visibly roll their eyes, throw their head back, or in some other manner show their frustration and acknowledgement of the situation. Yeah, I guess that's probably the closest to what I would do. 
The level two knows it's being watched always, so it needs to show that it may have made a mistake, but is intelligent enough to be aware of it. A level two or higher also can't think of anything else than that mistake on their way out of the station and beyond that. Okay, level three. Oh, this is where things get interesting. A level three cannot live with their mistake, so they'll make an effort to exteriorize. She grabs her phone, pointing to it. This is the most common scapegoat. A level three could pick up their phone and pretend to read a message or answer a call. They'll then make believe that they just got told to go somewhere else in their original destination. So I'm a three then, but the options didn't, the level three option didn't make it look like, because level three, it said just keep going, right? Not turn around, but do something. That's me, that's the level three. That's, surely that's most people are a level three then, judging by this skill, I would assume. Yeah, that's what I do. That's exactly my example. <laughs> the amount of people you see doing on the street makes me feel good because I know it's not just me that does this. Keep listening. Lifting the phone to her ear, she continues. Hi, really? I was on my way to air, but uh, oh, okay, I guess I'll go to B instead. Thanks. She puts her phone away, raising an eyebrow. Okay, I don't pretend to answer my phone. That's a bit too far. I never ever pretend that someone's calling me. I just look as if I'm gonna message or something and then just kind of shuffle along. I'll stop for a bit, as if I'm pretending to read a message. And then I'll let enough time go by that enough people have passed me by that it's all new people walking past, nobody that saw me walk in that direction originally. And then I'll head the other direction. <sighs> It's now no longer my fault I'm turning. I'm not being awkward. Circumstances just changed. Bonus points if you roll your eyes or sigh loudly while putting the phone away. This is what the level three is all about. Making excuses. It doesn't have to be a phone either. It could be anything. The level three is the kind of person in a class or workplace that makes sure everyone knows why they messed up or didn't perform well enough. They need people to believe they're not responsible. Ah, <laughs> welcome to me. Welcome to my brain. Everything that happens, everything that goes wrong, it's because something else didn't go right outside of my control. And I know that's not always a healthy way of thinking. Sometimes you've got to own that mistake. You've just got to just acknowledge it, right? You just got to say, look, I fudged up. Oops, it happens, right? But I'm just, it's so hard for me to accept that I do things wrong or have done something wrong. And when it's just a totally unavoidable mistake, I get super annoyed at myself, super frustrated, but I kind of, I go inside of myself a little bit and like, it's it's really something I need to work on. You know, I really need to work on bettering myself in that regard because it's like, just own it, man. If you've fudged up, accept you fudged up, accept it, move on. People are gonna forgive you, right? I just need to learn to get better at that. This game is really getting into my head on several various levels that I was not expecting it to. And I mean, this is a really funny way of, the, like, a, a great, like, a funny skill for figuring it out, but it also makes sense. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, level four's got to get pretty awkward, right? Oh, level four is very awkward. Level four's got, uh, level four's get tunnel vision. They can only think about their mistake and how embarrassed they are. So they lose any ability to make rational decisions. They break out into a cold sweat. They start frenetically looking around for people who might be watching. Oh boy. The level four just keeps walking. They use exit B. It doesn't matter if they're adding 30 minutes to their trip. They're completely unable of turning around. They've committed. Now I do teeter between three and four then. If I'm just walking down the street and I miss a turning on the street I'm walking down, then, then I'll do the phone trick. If I'm on a bus and I miss my stop, I won't be like, oh, sorry, sorry, and because you bus drivers will sometimes pull over if, if you just miss your stop, sometimes. I mean, I'm not saying they always do, but I'm just so mortified and bringing attention to myself on a bus full of people that I'll just be like, I'll just get off at the next stop. And I've done that even when the stop between, the, the distance between bus stops is pretty big. So I've added 15, 20 minutes on a journey just doing that before, right? Um, but there's another time when I was on the bus and someone just decided to nap. It happens, long day at work, people fall asleep on the bus. I, I was like five stops past my usual stop because I didn't want to wake them up. Is that more concern for other people's feelings or is that just because, again, don't want to draw attention to myself? I don't know, a bit of a mix of both. 
but yeah, I, I definitely, I don't like to be kind of center of attention in that regard. The guy doing YouTube videos doesn't like to be the center of attention, but this is different. We're having fun. We're playing a game. We're having a bit of banter, you know? It's not, oops, I, I fudged something up. I'm going to stop saying fudge. I don't know why I'm not just dropping the usual swear words. I guess I'm feeling a little bit uh, less sweary today. But anyway, so yeah, I guess I'm a three slash four, depending on the situation. It's not that the level four is proud or more decisive. The level four is handicapped by their awkwardness. They're so awkward, they can't think straight. Cool, what about number five? Because that didn't even seem like it was on the list. Okay, so a level five on the MMES is a serious thing. They're also very rare, but do exist. Level five is so awkward that it stops working. What happens scientifically when a level five triggers an awkward event is somewhat unclear, but my study suggests that every single synapse, synapse, synapse in their brain fires off at once effectively short-circuiting them. They just go into shutdown mode, basically. Oh boy. The level four acts irrationally, but does so based on its mistake. It continues on its trajectory, unfortunate trajectory. The level five becomes completely illogical. We're talking running in circles, screaming, crying, breaking down, melting into a puddle on the platform. Eventually the shutdown of all motor functions. Wow, is there anything higher than a five? Like, you know, explosions? If there is, I've never seen it. Technically, it's possible that someone is so awkward that they start to affect and even bend gravity. They literally sink into the ground. <laughs> we all feel that way sometimes. She considers her previous statement, frowning. The level five is a danger to itself, but anything above would, I suppose, be a threat to everything and everyone around it. Is this a setup for something else in the game? Sometimes when they set this kind of stuff up, it's something that might appeal later on in the game. You know, oh, we're going to encounter a level six somewhere and they like basically create a black hole. Determine whether or not this applies to you. Look, we call this a failure, but this is one of those cases where it really does good not to succeed. Like, you don't want to respond correctly to a psychopath test. <laughs> it's true. You don't have superpowers. Uh, okay, you still there? Yeah, sorry, I was just rolling a 20-sided die in my mind. Just ignore me. Um, Alright, I guess that's all I wanted to know. Great. Now about that name. Isn't the subway slip system a tad sharper? Listen, it's just a tiny theory right now. If I could turn it into a big theory, then we can start getting picky with names. But I want my name on the... I want my name on the bloody... Report. Um, thing. What the hell do you call it? Theory. So what are you planning to do with this revolutionary breakthrough? I have to prove it. That's how science works. You can have all the theories you want, but they're not worth a thing unless you can reproduce them. Prove them? Huh. So you're gonna test it out? Test groups? Surveys? Test it out? I... Uh, I'm not gonna do anything, probably. She seems pensive, overlooking her notes. It's just for fun. There's not actual scientific need for the MMES. I honestly don't have time to do any of that field research. Eh, doesn't matter anyway. Oh no, polls, surveys. Huh, huh, what level are you on this scale, Linda? What level am I? I'm, uh, not sure. I haven't been the Metro in a really long time, to be honest. That's not a solid answer, is it, though? Because I provided an answer, and I haven't either been on any kind of Metro system for a while. The whole theory is based on Metro behavior. I figured you would have spent a lot of time there. Oh, right. No, I just hear a lot about it. A lot of people post stuff about their insecurities and anxieties online, and I sort of formed the theory around that. It works with buses too, because honestly, I'm a bus person. I catch a lot of buses, I don't drive. I, I like public transport. I actually kind of do like the relaxation of having someone else drive you around, stick some music on or read a book for a bit, you know? I like buses, but there's a lot of little mini anxieties tied to buses too. Like I said, one of the things is when I'm sitting on the window seat, if someone sits next to me, I'm like, oh no, please get off the stop before I do so I don't have to disturb you to get off the bus. Um, and here too, where you get off the at the back doors of the bus, and you've got to wave your stupid 
Stupid hand. <laughs> Wave your hand in front of the stupid automatic doodad thing to open the door. The amount of times I'm like, what if this door doesn't open and the bus driver doesn't know I need to get off the bus? Or what if I have to actually shout at the bus driver to open the doors? Ah, there's a lot of things that pop into one's mind. Believe me, I have experienced plenty of that kind of thing. So, yeah, it's real. Public, trans public transportation anxiety is real. <laughs> It's all based on personal experience, just not my personal experience. Hmm. Oh, I've got more detection. Try to discern. Try to discern how high she places on the MMES. Hmm. Hmm. Anything to get more dice rolls in? Oh, I just, just. Let's see, Linda never leaves the building, speaks to hardly anyone, spends most of her time on the internet or inside her own head, and is obsessed with what it's like to be awkward. She's a five. And being a level five isn't as crazy as she makes it out to be. It just means you would never even be in the Metro. No, oh, that makes sense. Can't be easy for her. Might not be a great idea to bring it up. Your call, Chief. Okay, anyway, no. How about, do it online? Not that much work, right? Paul, service, easy. I could, I guess. Hmm, it would take a lot of time though. And I'm not sure if the scientific community would accept the results, but I guess I could try. Do it, go for it. That's gonna take a while. You could help too, speed things up. Or not, it's up to you. This way you don't have to promise anything. Hmm, if you can handle the paperwork and all that stuff, I can take care of the field research. Why not? Add it to the list of quests. Hey, experience is experience. You know what? Oh, sorry. Not Linda speaking yet. You know what? Earlier when I told you she was excited and happy, it pales in comparison to what's happening now. Are you serious? Really? Yes! I love that! Let's do this! Yay! This is why I didn't want to start the discussion in the, uh, in the last episode because it's taken pretty much the whole episode to go through this theory. So what exactly do you need to test your theory? I need data, I suppose. There's determination and pragmatism in her voice. And she continues, We don't have the time or resources to test this on a thousand people. I think the best course of action is to find a true level one and a true level five. Or six, I guess. We document the responses and use that data to gain more traction. She studies you, but I don't think we can use our cells for the study. Doesn't seem very scientific. Then, with more traction, we have the attention and the potential funding to actually pursue the theory in a greater scope. Wow. Got it. I need to find someone not awkward at all, and someone who's incredibly awkward, interview them, and bring the data back to you. Sweet! Okay, can we talk about the fundamentals? No, I think we get it. We get it. I haven't done any progress yet, so it doesn't matter. I'll be on my way. And good luck. And don't be a stranger. I'm here whenever. I like Linda. I like her a lot. I guess I can't just wander into her apartment. No, it's not. She's already in the stairwell. Well, what if I wanted to go and be nosy in her apartment? Let's go and see what our apartment looks like. Nice. Hey, is it just me or is this a nicer apartment than the one we had before? Oh yeah, sorry, we got a promotion, right? We make more money now so we can afford a slightly nicer apartment. Ooh, a houseplant. Tiny green seaweedy tendrils hang over the sides of the pot. This plant's been neglected. Ah, clam man, I see you're as good at looking after plants as I am. Suddenly a few of them shift and move and the plant speaks up with a gruff voice. Yeah? What? Do why are you so cranky? Oh, I wonder. I wonder why I'm cranky. You think I love being a plant stuck inside a house? Our natural habitat. Are you hungry? I know that's when I get cranky. Hungry. Oh, of course I'm cranky. I'm stuck here in this godforsaken pot in this godforsaken apartment. The houseplant grunts and continues quietly. Mm. And yes, I'm very, very hungry. That sounds like cranky talk to me. I'll get you something to eat. Hurry, I'm starving here. Okay, plant, bye. Whatever. Cool, need to get the plant some food. Um, eventually. Uh, what else have we got here? Miniature sand- Hey, we got some sandbags. Some ads and miniature sandbags. Nothing more than overpriced tiny rock cloth containers. Callbacks. Love it. No in the mood to set the bed. No go to sleep right now. 
set the bed, not make the bed. Set the bed. Is that a phrase? It's something new every day, I guess. Um, video games. A few games and the Nintendo clutch. <laughs> What's this little scarf? Is that a reference to something else? You bought that thing back when flat screen was still a selling point. I guess it's not so much now. Wow, that's not much space to walk around the couch there, but uh, ooh, table. Empty chairs and empty tables. Empty life. Ooh. Oh, McGregorson boy. That's the show that bloody everyone was talking about in the first game. Ah, your McGregorson's boy poster. Your most valuable possession. Cost you 23 bucks. $23 for a poster? Jeez, dude, you got robbed of smoke. Not the first time I've seen that joke on a fridge. Whoa. I've seen a lot of that since lockdown began. The light of the fridge. <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like, not even to get food. This is just so often now I'm just wandering around the house forlorn. I just open the fridge just to look in it. And then shut it again. I mean, that was before lockdown too, but it, 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 it's an increased thing now. I'm doing it more. You swing the door open, the light clicks, and the content of the fridge is illuminated by what seems like a spotlight. There's food in here. Oh, right. What are you offering, fridge? There's tomatoes, milk, bread, and cold cuts. A bunch of empty jars and packages. A tomato, bread, milk, cold cuts. I don't want anything after all. There's nothing in that fridge that a plant would want to eat. Um, what else can we look at here? There's a note. Note itself. Stop writing pointless notes. Well, I mean, if you're going to have post-its, I guess you might as well do something with them, you know? Dishes that need washing. No time for dishes. Words to live by. <laughs> bills, hooray. Looking at the bills fills you with an existential dread. Maybe a career change wasn't the best move right now. Hey, I'm still getting paid to be a junior sales, no, sorry. Senior sales representative, right? Pete just said to take time off, but he didn't say it was unpaid, did he? It's a nice clock. It's just a shame it doesn't work. Maybe you should give it a hand sometime. Good work, clock. Yeah, sorry. Couldn't resist. It, it told me to do it. I had to. Okay. So I guess next time we... Why? What, what, what the heck do we need out of that fridge? A tomato? Bread? What the heck? I mean, what does the plant... Maybe the plant does want something random. Maybe it wants something unexpected. I mean, you'd think it would want plant food, but... Maybe we could go back to Snacky Mart and buy some plant food there, maybe. I don't know. Gonna have to figure some of that stuff out next time. Because I'm all out of time right now. Man, that conversation with Linda was fun. That that theory is very interesting. I never even thought about a bloody... Uh, that kind of a skill before. But it was kind of interesting to place myself within it. And really, honestly, everybody is something on that scale, right? Teetering between a three and a four, definitely, depending on my situation and where I am. But, uh, yeah, on the precipice I am. So, uh, where, where, where are you? Where are you on the scale? Huh? How awkward are you? <laughs> oh, boy. All right, if you want to play um, this prologue uh, yourselves in the first game as well, I will pop links to both in the description below, as as always. Don't forget to want the like button, subscribe button, and ring link to the notification bell, too, you know, if you want to do that stuff. Uh, if you have any game recommendations for me, just want to have a bit of a general chit chat, then how about it in the comments below, or you can catch me on the social medias, which are also linked in the description below. Alright, yeah, I have been Mikey Bly, level 3 slash 4 on the MMA scale. <laughs> and I hope you all have yourselves a fantastic morning, afternoon, evening, or night, and I will see you all next time around. Bye for now.